welcome back to another episode of Doodling Through Education. For my CC students, this is Cycle 1, Week 10, Science. For everyone else, that means we're going to continue talking about plants, and specifically, we're going to narrow in on talking about plant shapes today. If you haven't already, go ahead and head on over to doodlingthrougheducation.com. I've created worksheets that go along with each of these videos to help your student dive further into each of these topics. And there's a link for that in the description if you need it. Um, you can also purchase them by quarter. So we are in the second quarter and you can just buy this quarter if that makes it more convenient. Without further ado, let's start doodling. Today we are going to be talking about some leaf shapes. And specifically, we're going to talk about six leaf shapes. Broadly, leaves are classified into two categories, needles and flat leaves. And if you remember from last week, we talked about how flat leaves can de be defined as simple and compound. But now we're going to dive deeper, not only into flat leaves, but also into talking about needles. So really, when you're talking about plants, leaves are one of the most important parts of a plant. So I just wanted to go through the leaves purpose. We've talked about it briefly in previous videos, but I really wanted to continue to remind you about why a plant has leaves. So remember, we talked about how plants produce food, and that is through a process called photosynthesis. And inside all leaves, there are these pigments which give the leaves their colors. So most leaves, unless it's fall time, are green. And this green pigment is called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is found in chloroplasts and it helps with photosynthesis. This is the pigment that absorbs the energy from the sunlight, and then the leaves use this energy to make the sugars that become the food for the plant. Now, I mentioned that not all leaves are always green. Some turn colors in the fall. Well, plants can lose their leaves if they are what's called deciduous. And deciduous trees shed all their leaves in the fall before it gets to be cold. The reason they do this is because they stop growing during these times and they need to conserve energy as well as protect their branches from breaking from the weight of the snow that will inevitably fall in the winter time. So as the leaves green color fades, red, yellow, or orange pigments become visible. And while it's very beautiful for us to see, the tree is actively trying to lose these leaves. Remember last week we talked about the leaf's petiole. Well, the base of the leaf's petiole at this time becomes weaker so that the leaf can fall off due to the wind. Thankfully, the leaves, as you have seen, do grow back when the seasons change again to spring. So when it comes to the structure of a leaf, like I said, this varies greatly. There are needles, which belong to evergreens, and then there are flat leaves on other plants. And in these flat leaves, there are veins. And these veins work a lot like blood vessels inside an animal or a person's body. They carry that food and water to and from the leaves. Humans have found many different types of uses for leaves. Herbs such as rosemary and thyme can be used to flavor food. Tea can be made by soaking the leaves of a tea plant in hot water. And even some leaves can be used for medicine. The leaves and flowers of different plants can be used 
for many medicinal purposes, including to reduce fever or inflammation. But you must be careful if you are out in the forest because some leaves can also be harmful. I'm sure you have all heard about poison oak and poison ivy. And these leaves produce oil that can cause a rash or pain on your skin. So now that we have reviewed the purposes of leaves and some uses of leaves, let's dive into talking about the six shapes of leaves. First, there are linear leaves. And so what does a linear leaf look like? Well, it is typically long and narrow in shape, and its sides are almost parallel with each other. And a good rule to follow when looking at leaves and determining whether or not it's linear is that linear leaves are usually more than four times longer than they are wide. And so some plants that have linear leaves include lavender and rosemary, as well as most grasses. Next up are oval leaves. The rule with oval leaves are they are wider at the base than they are at their midpoint and they gradually become thinner as they reach the top. Many of these deciduous trees that we talked about, the ones that lose their leaves in the winter, have oval shaped leaves. Next are lobed leaves. These lobed leaves have a very distinct shape and you can identify them by their distinct rounded or pointed projections while unlobed leaves do not have those. Now there are two different types of lobed leaves that I wanted to narrow in on. There's pinnate leaves, meaning the lobes are located along a central axis, while there are also palmate leaves. And these radiate from a single point. An example of a tree with lobed leaves is a maple tree, as well as mulberry and several other plants, including this, some thistles and some nightshades. Next are the cleft leaves. A cleft leaf is a leaf that has these deep lobes in them. And the rule for identifying these types of leaves is that those lobes must be more than halfway to the base or the midrib. An example of a plant with this type of leaves are monstras. Now we're going to talk about some leaves that evergreen trees have. And the first one we're going to talk about are scale-like leaves. And these are small and typically flat, and they often overlap each other. These scale-like leaves do a really good job storing food and water. And like I said, they are evergreens, so they do not drop their leaves in the winter. So an example of a plant with these type of leaves are junipers. And last, let's talk about needle-like leaves. Conifers have leaves that resemble these needles and they also remain on the tree year round and so they are also evergreen trees and so you might be wondering how do the needles get replaced well since they don't lose them they typically replace them slowly and continuously one of the main reasons that a pine tree or a conifer tree have needle shaped leaves is though so that it helps them to retain more water and in this way it helps the tree to survive during those cold seasons it reduces that surface area and so it really minimizes the water that evaporates and is lost and that's all we have for today and so i would like you to this week go through those four worksheets in your science notebook and dive into learning more about these leaf shapes and the role that leaves have in helping to keep a tree or a plant alive
And on that note, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.